Hello? Okay. It's okay. Thank you for coming to the Install Squire today, this afternoon. Uh, my name is Henry Eric. I, I will give um, a lecture um, um, in relation or related to the um, um, Cuban political culture. I will talk about um, uh, several process of this um, Cuban bureaucracy. And the title of the lecture is uh, That Sine Qua Non Condition Now Has Censorship. So um, it is in democratic context, it is necessary to refer to institution in abstract in totalitarian system, such as the Cuban, it is pathetic to, to trade them as um, divine abstraction. Those orders have not voice or face with no one accountable for their action. Given the fact that Cuban institutions are not charitable or evil uh, facilities, when referring to them, one should observe those giving life to them and consequently the society embracing them, a society whose um, patriotism uh, is rooted in a declared animosity and whose human aims rest uh, in the unconditional grating to preference to politics over family to the strength or finding family, break up normal signs, safeguarding a political stance in considerate of duty. Said institutions are the result of a severe or um, and persistent um, politicization. They uh, proselytics or um, collectivization work is uh, sustained on constraint and coercion. However, this doesn't mean that Cubans, ranging from the most um, commitment to the most estimates, opportunities, resigned, indifferent, or even the opponents or the op op opposition, like, like uh, political opposition, feel less identified with uh, those methods. Rather, they feel over um, how can I say, um, over well meet um, whenever they believe that institutional paternalism is um, failing. I, I am talking about the um, bureaucracy uh, paternalism in, in relation to the cultural, cultural project or cultural artistic work. Um, the bureaucracy um, essential 
please, um, can you roll the, the PDF? Uh, the bureaucrat acts of the bureaucrats, essential function is to fulfill a political mission. Thus, anyone holding a leadership position is known as a professional party uh, cadre. It's like um, they, they, they take a militant and avant-garde um, role into the uh, Communist Party in Cuba. An individual, I am talking now, an individual whose uh, ideological and administrative discipline or discipline allows him or her to practice uh, democratic centralism. It is um, it's like um, a concept from, from Che Guevara uh, from the beginning of the Cuban uh, revolution process. In any social, social context, a cadre impose, or it's like in Spanish, it could be a cuadro politico or cuadro de la, de la, de la cultura, impose political authority by exercising perfect discipline or that linked, um, linked to, to the state um, or the ideological uh, machinery of, uh, of the state uh, with, the, with, the po with the population, with the people. No? Um, within the, the, the cultural context of the context of art and culture, uh, where there is uh, predominance uh, the symbolic uh, production like uh, art or literature, cinema, etc., etc., uh, the cadre and the chain of command to which she or he is attached have a crystal clear role as a sensor. So, um, um, the will of, of a person uh, exciting censorship is um, elated by a feeling of beneficence. Moreover, when referring to, 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 to the will of the political censor, he believes blinding in the purifying intention of his censoring, censoring acts and insights in the generosity and compassion he feels toward the victims. So that we are saying now, there are uh, some, uh, at the beginning there were some uh, Cuban artists for uh, um, censorship or cases in, in Cuba. This is um, one of the Cuban artists from the 80s, uh, Juan C. He was a uh, censorship in different moments at the end of, of the 80s and he was uh, pulling jade in, in several moments. And at, at the beginning of the 90s, he was expelled from, from, from Cuba for the, for the cultural Cuban uh, bureaucracy. Um, the other case is um, Angel Delgado. He was an art, he's, he's a Cuban artist. He, he lives now in, in, the U, in the United States. And, it, it, it was a big or a clear um, constructed uh, censorship cases, uh, case in, in Cuban culture, in, uh, specifically in, in, the, in, in the field of visual arts. And he, he was sent to the, to the prison for, for six months. And he, he was uh, taken by the Cuban uh, bureaucracy has, um, how can I say, has um, um, big cases to, to construct some fear environment around Cuban art uh, pro production. So um, the other two cases are pictures of Tania Bruguera and her sister. And the other picture is the, the art studio of uh, Luis Manuel Otero Alcántara. There are two, uh, Luis Manuel Otero Alcántara um, is now in prison in Cuba. Um, um, it, this picture is from um, 
2017, and it was one of the first times when the national uh, police and the political police, uh, uh, you know, and in, invade her his his studio in Havana, and the the picture on the top is the is um, a capture from the Cuban television. Uh, the the program is the Noticiero Nacional de Televisión in, in Cuba, and this is a picture that um, like um, the construction of the case uh, made by the Cuban government to to send to so to um, send to Tania to the prison in 2015, I think, and but. They also use the, the the picture of Tanya's sister to to build or to construct this sensor uh, chip case. Um, in this case, and, and in this, um, well, there are some other pictures of Cuban uh, cultural fu functionary, um, or has, as I said, in this. Um, uh, text, uh, Cuban cadre is cuadro politico are the professional functionary from the Cuban Communist Party that um, pay attention or are the, the directors of different in, in cultural institutions in, in Cuba. Um, the idea uh, to show this picture is that we are always showing the, the picture of, of the victims, of the victims of this kind of political culture, but we never uh, show or we never saw the, 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 the picture of the victimary, of these uh, people that, that, that create, that make a plan around the political violence and, and, and the censorship in, in Cuba. Um, such, uh, such arbitrariness almost always point at the foul without considering of demonstration cause and effect, and the resolution of said foul, uh, foul falls in the hands of, 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 of the political rules of uh, accusation. So it is what um, we are, or we want to to say, or we want to to show. So, what um, or what are the um, the roles or the political roles roles of the of the accusation of the cultural accusation to to this um, artist? No, that that an example that we that we saw uh, be, be, before. They, the imposition of political and ideological standard not only implies the appearance of disobedience, transgression of crime, it also institutes as a natural ap aptitude one of the characteristics of authoritarianism. The typification of the foul, it is like in Spanish, we, we, we say the, the, the falta, it's like not a well uh, the behavior, no? Um, the typification of the foul, or that say it wisely, the manufacturative, manufacturate of es escapade goats. Has uh, Claude Lefort uh, said, was right when they indicated that the enigma of totalitarianism resides in the fact that it achieved to present its authoritarianism both as a product of the people and as it is purifying agent. Um, the idea, there are two other. Um, uh, fu functionaries that were very active in the 90s in Cuba, in this um, cross time from the 80s and the 90s in Cuba, there are so uh, actually uh, the, um, the director of the Cuban Contemporary Art Museum or Cuban Fine Eye Museum, um, 
the the picture on the bottom is the 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 she is the president of the Cuban National uh, Council of Visual Arts. Um, there are both one of the of the people that have been um, planning and e executing the censorship in in Cuba in the last three or four or five years. Um, I I will do only an I, I will do a brief uh, pre presentation, just um, to talk about um, a specific um, case. Mm. Um, in in 2018, uh, the collective of the the San Isidro movement created the the first uh, Cuban uh, independent uh, Biennale. Um, the the artist uh, collective Celia Junior and I participate in this uh, in this Cero uh, Cero Biennale of Havana. It it, it was the 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 name or the title of this uh, biennial, and we the work that that we done in in collaboration. Um, days before we finish uh, our, our work, uh, the the father or the brother of, of my friend, the artist uh, Celia uh, Gonzalez, they are they are both a retired colonel and visit. Um, Lean out colonel from the state uh, Cuban uh, security. Uh, they both stated uh, the authority, um, military authority in this case, on behalf of what they call it Operation Zero Zero. So they invent this kind of military operation against Cuban artists. And both officers met with uh, Celia's mother. And at a park in, in Havana, and to inform her that her, um, sorry, to the Celia's mom, that her daughter was, her daughter was involved in a counter-revolutionary action. So that, uh, that she should uh, per, persuade her daughter that um, no attend uh, the said Biennale Sant uh, she could end up in prison, just uh, our friends, uh, Tane Bruguera. So they uh, intimidate Celia's mom, and they uh, ask to Celia's mom that uh, say to, to his daughter, so you cannot to participate in this uh, independent uh, Biennale. And so when, when Celia's mom come to uh, tell to, to Celia about it, Celia uh, make a telephone call to her brother, Pavel, and she uh, forbids him from annoying her mother with such a problem like, like, like that. No? In this case, um, in this moment, uh, Pavel explained it to, to Celia um, what happened was that Jorge uh, Fernandez, the, the director of, of Cuban uh, Museum, spoke with Gladys uh, Collazo, another, um, another uh, Cuban uh, functionary, um, that uh, for her to ask um, to, to, to call to Mother uh, of Celia, um, and get like uh, a, a, a political ad advice in relation uh, to this. Um, in this case, the point is that, that Celia uh, replied to, to her brother Pavel and in relation to this, and his and her brother said that uh, this um, functionary of cultural uh, fu functionary, Jorge Fernandez is also 
from the state uh, Cuban uh, security. It's like the the um, uh, military police. So it is really important for us because so can. Um, it is really important in this case because um, we can see or you can understand the, the preoccupation uh, to the uh, cultural institution in Cuba to work um, together or very close um, to the uh, Cuban security, no? And, and so, so the Cuban state, uh, state Cuban uh, se security. And the most important point is that um, as an artist or as intellectual, or we cannot to do anything um, in, on this point because um, when uh, state security said to the Cuban cultural institution that some artists uh, cannot show in this place or some other artists cannot um, travel out of Cuba to, to some artistic project. Um, the, the cultural institution uh, uh, stop the artist to do anything or the, the Cuban institution say the artist, so you cannot come to this place or you, you cannot go to other place. So um, it is really important to understand this um, kind of process because the other point is that when some of these um, some of these um, functionary uh, left the, the the cultural Cuban institution, they come to the first world or, or some different environment or cultural environment like documenta, for example, or some, or some other um, museum or galleries to work uh, as a democratic people. Or, you know, so they, people like Abel Prieto or Fernando Roja or Jorge Fernandez or Norma, um, they work in Cuba um, creating and planning this kind of political violence and censorship. And then when, when, when they travel to Europe or to the United States or Latin America, they talk and they act uh, as a democratic people or as a uh, democratic intellectual or, pro or professional. And I think it is, it is really important uh, to do this um, little Pre, pre, presentation um, to show to the um, to the professional of of cultural um, project around the world or cultural environment like like uh, doc documenta is uh, that we have um, to be careful or we we have to be clear that we are not talking with uh, um, with uh, professional people, you know, we are we are talking with a functionary of Cuban Communist Party. So I, I I think it is really important for us as a Cuban artists or thinkers um, to put this in in clear. No, so um, I have two other cases. I I, I talk also in these um, chapters um, or in this lecture about some other, um, I mean, um, artists, uh, researchers, or um, intellectual or artists um, that in different moments have been have been working uh, or had, have been taking Cuba as a subject or their uh, re research. Um, and it is really important because uh, in, the, in the, uh, the discussions uh, about Cuba, they uh, have not put these uh, situations in, you know, uh, clear. 
this is the case of the of the artist um, researcher uh, Luis Calnizer. Um, he wrote a book, uh, the first Cuban uh, book uh, um, on contemporary Cuban art at the end of the 80s and in the beginning of the 90s of the of the past uh, century. Um, Luis Carnizer always know about, about the Cuban situation, about the censorship in Cuba, about the uh, political violence in Cuba, about this kind of political violence into the, into the uh, cultural environment in Cuba, but he never wrote about it. So uh, I think that he was, Luis Carnizer, the first person um, that so he started this uh, imaginary about, about Cuban cultural context as a paradise, as a um, um, utopian paradise. And it is really important because his book has been uh, edited in different moments, like uh, revising the edition and published again and, and again. It is like... Uh, a book text for different um, um, universities around the world. So, and um, we we have to do uh, some some work now to put this um, in discussion. And but it's a really um, how can I say very very hard for us. Uh, to go against or to 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 critique or this uh, this discursive uh, imagine that that Luis Carnizer uh, created. So there are some other um, books in, in relation uh, to this, uh, but. It is what we were yesterday here with uh, my colleague uh, Tania Bruguera pre presenting the, the book that be uh, the anthology or the, the collective anthology that we uh, edited uh, together for this uh, project. Um, I don't know, it is just a little um, problem or plot about about this um, about the, the the censorship has a, has a sine qua non uh, condition to to support the the the, the Cuban uh, political culture or basically the the political culture of the Cuban government. Um, so I think it's. I think it's, it's, it's a little presentation. I, I have a little question. I have a question. Uh, what, what do you think are the main myths that have been constructed by these foreigner uh, art historians who have wrote, written about Cuban art without putting in their book uh, things they know, like you say, like uh, some of these head of the arts councils are related with the Ministry of Interior uh, directly and so on. What are the, the biggest myths that they have created uh, because they didn't put this info? Yeah, I think, I think they, are, they are living or, or, or they, they, they have that we can say this kind of less compromise with, with with Cuban government or with Cuban party or with Cuban or we, we can say part of the cultural environment um, or cultural context in Cuba. And I think that um, Cuba has, has been in, in the last 50 or 55 years um, the, the, the place when, um, where every uh, left intellectual or left uh, thinkers want to go. So uh, every left 
thinkers from different places, from Africa, from Latin America, from Europe, from the United States, uh, want, want to go to Cuba, and they, are, they, they have been creating this uh, imaginary um, around Cuban context, and um, where this, this point or, or this uh, specifically um, Cuban our uh, production are very, very uh, relevant or, or important. No? Has cinema or visual arts or music or, you know, theater or literature, no? And, and I think the, the, this is the, um, uh, the main, uh, the, we, we can say, I, idea of, of these uh, intellectuals or artists or um, cultural um, critiques, no? So, so many questions or something. Um. Hi, um, Pokat Birke from German Radio. I was wondering, you're sitting here, Tanya is sitting here, are you allowed to go back to Cuba being so critical? No. No. So you're exiled. So this is one of the means of the system as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, they... Cuban cultural context uh, has, um, has lived in different, uh, like... Um, a strong censorship moments and some soft censorship moments, you know? but um, Cuban context and Cuban context and uh, whole, uh, whole have been, you know, have been, um, yeah, we have been suffering. We can say different moments with a big uh, exile or, you know, wave, you know, and people and artists and intellectual. Um, some some time uh, the elites, the intellectual elites, um, have made some uh, we can say some uh, negotiation or negotiation with the in institutions, with the cultural institution, but at the same time, uh, um, many factions of these or, or groups or little group of this elite has said no to this uh, negotiation with the Cuban government. So, and this is a moment when, when, when the government caught, now uh, we have caught the, the communication. So we have not uh, like a dialogue or a communication. With, Which was actually promised with the yeah, San Isidro. Yeah, yeah. With, with, with the government. So, and they have said no. But there are most, or there are um, most, um, you know, more uh, are people or cultural people that that say yes, or maybe say well, maybe yes, or maybe not. But um, to be quiet in relation to this uh, protest, or you know, or this. Um, um, acts against the, the the government. No, so in this case, uh, we are. Um, I think that a little, you know, group or a little uh, percent. But it was uh, it 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 happened also at the end of the eighties. But it have been it happened also in, in the sixty in the seventies. So it's like I don't know, seven percent or ten. Percent, not of the people. How many are in prison, writers, artists, in at this very moment? And I don't want to monopolize the microphone, but I no, think no, it's yeah, a yeah, yeah. Uh, we have two two friends, for example, two members of the Movimiento uh, San Isidro. They are in prison now, but they are um, a lot of activists and journalists and. Um, writers, like uh, uh, political prisoners, but the Cuban government say, say not because they, they have not. So we, we have not mm, to know in Cuba what, 
what what is the number of this kind of of um, prisoners no so uh, and at the same time the the other point is that is a uh, really um I don't know, really soft or really um, dark. Some some time the the censorship in Cuba. So we have also some college or some art, some artists, um, friend or off that they has been suffering the censorship in the eighties. But but now the the political culture was. Um, Give them some space at the at the museum or gallery and some uh, promotion. Some and they first um, cut or put the the censorship on you, but um, after they give you some opportunity, some possibility. So, and it is if you if you get like a well uh, behavior in relation to the political of the government, so you can get this. And, and we uh, understand this, no? because some people um, don't, don't, don't want to go outside Cuba, don't want to go to, to the exile. No? It is uh, really hard some, some time. And so, so it is um, very complex, the, the situation. But the point is that is, is, uh, Cuban is not a democratic context. So we have been living uh, for 60 years with only one communist party. So um, you cannot create uh, like a, a legal or organization, some civic organization or another party or a private gallery or, you know, like a, a cultural center or any places. No? So, and, and I think it is really, really important for us. Uh, it, it was the case of that uh, in independent uh, Biennale in 2018, you know, where some little group, we were like, I don't know, maybe 25 artists, no? Um, enrolling in, in, in this uh, process, no? Uh, you mentioned that um, that uh, um, that is very important that um, show the faces of the victimary instead of the victims. Uh, it's because it's uh, uh, the necessity of creating a counter narrative, or there are other reasons for that. No, I think the, I think that in the first point because they are part or. They are part of the Cuban uh, society, so the the Cuban system um, has, you know, has uh, been created by the Cuban uh, so society. So the Cuban society take part in this uh, bureaucracy, take part in the um, military institution, take part in the every uh, educational institution. So it's our responsibility as a Cuban uh, to show both faces, the victim faces and the, and the victimary faces at the same time. And I think it's good in this uh, specifically uh, cultural field or cultural context, national or international, that curators, um, you know, um, directors of the museum or Biennale, uh, these uh, people or international cultural people has to know what is happening in Cuba. Uh, what are the, the, the people or the functionary that are um, making this, uh, this um, uh, political culture? So it is not um, like, um, like a, a a national role in Cuba. So they are playing also an international role. So in the promotion of censorship artists or many, many of these um, that, that, that we say we are, they are, how do you say, implementing the, the political violence in Cuba. So they are planning every day what is happening in the, in the field of culture in Cuba. 
So both national and international at the, at the same time. So, and I think it's really important for us uh, to, to put two, two faces at the same time uh, in the same moment, no? Ok, ¿me escuchan? Perfecto, ok. Eh, bueno, yo tengo una curiosidad más que una pregunta. Eh, yo vengo, soy venezolana, trabajo en Venecia, en la Bienal, y bueno, tengo más o menos claro, entre comillas, quién está, quién curó el, pab el pabellón de la Bienal de este año. ¿Cómo? Ah, como, como prefieran. Ah, ¿puedo, puedo traducirme si quieren. Uh, I'll just do it in English then. Uh, so I am working at the Venice Biennale and I was wondering, because I think it's very interesting that this is happening here, which is a completely different environment if you oppose it to the Venice Biennale. And I know that the person that created the pavilion is Nelson Ramirez de Arellano, which created the, the Biennale, the Habana, the Biennale de La Habana in 2021. So I am wondering, what's your position in all this? How does it feel to be like the complete opposite face contemporarily, you know, because the Venice Biennale, as much as it is interesting and all you want, is still a big place when it comes to political propaganda inside the pavilions. I mean, I'm talking as a Venezuelan, so I know it in the skin. Like two year, three, three years ago, the last, Venice, the last Venice Biennale Venezuelan pavilion was incredible, incredible. Like, it was like chills. If you, got it, you went inside, it was all red. And there was this, this picture of a crying child. And if you saw through like a transparent piece of, of plastic, you would see it becoming the face of Trump. And you know, the left, people in, in Venice were like, oh, wow, this is so risky. And I was there almost having like a panic attack when I went inside, you know? So I think it's very, very important that you're here. I am wondering how, you, how you're dealing with this like parallel thing. Yeah, I think that I, I, I was thinking to put the, the picture of Nelson um, some other friend or of um, uh, Ruslan, uh, he was, he's another artist that he was the director of, of Visual Arts University in Havana. Uh, he expelled me from the university in 2017, um, some other friends. Uh, this is another kind of Cuban functionary. When, when you get an artist with a, a well behavior in relation to the political uh, culture of, of the government, and you put uh, a guy has a Nelson in this, and the government are, um, is now making um, like a little, um, they are rushing to, to get, to, to win some space in relation to our uh, critic work or you know or this kind of display that Tania Bruguera has um, created and, and stuff and they are home they um, the Cuban um, government and um, Ministry of Culture have some some so many places or some left many places um, when when they when they can work no um, it is really hard for us because uh, Nelson has not said anything um, about this um, Cuban artist or intellectual that uh, are in, in, in prison or or about. So I I I show it with Nelson maybe ten years ago in different uh, exhibitions here in Europe and France and in Spain and here in Germany. So also Tania. So and and yeah, it is a really. Um, I think it is that 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 is happening. No, so 
they they got the the power they they got the big institution the connections with with the left institutions or parties and embassies and everything no are around the the world um they they put some artists and they are like uh, you know like like uh, planning this kind of i don't know it is it's not fake but it is another kind of art that exists in Cuba, um, but it's really soft. It's like you know, sometimes like a plastic um, work, and well, they have not. It's like a, a stereotypes uh, work, you know, really, really uh, stereotypes. Like, and it is yeah, and maybe it, it is the the problem in in Venice that. Um, they are um, some um, um, yeah left intellectual people, curators um, that they this kind of people that that I call it uh, political pilgrims that they come to Cuba, they were in in in, in the like you know in, Be in Venezuela, Nicaragua also. So they are some. Utopian places now for for these people, but thank you for for this uh, for this uh, forgiveness this 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 ploy. This point. No, it's great question because also for example. Um, we, a lot of Cuban artists, are related to Havana Biennial because we show there for the first time, international and all of that. But the last time, the last Havana Biennial, uh, directed by Arellanos, uh, was uh, created not in the same months that they normally do it, uh, in a different length. Uh, normally, it's, I don't know, one month and a half or something, or two months. Now it was almost five months, six months. And it was planned once again to use art to whitewash the image of the country. Because these were, at the time they started the Bania, there were 17 artists in prison. Now there are, I think, two or three. But at that time, there were much more people either waiting for trial or in prison artists. And it was very well designed to attract tourists, like intellectual tourism, have the money, but also have these people trapped in their um, terrain, let's say, to tell them whatever they want to tell them about everybody else. Because, but it didn't work. It didn't work because a lot of artists got together and we boycott the biennial. And we had more than 700 people inside and outside Cuba signing. The thing that is important is almost half of these people were Cubans. And from the Cubans, almost another half were inside the country. So that's a big number because you know how hard it is to have a signature of somebody who is in the place where is being abused or, or you know, um, it's politically violence exercise on them so i think this is how they do it you know and when they go to venice they don't care about art they don't care about the history of art they don't, what they care is about show, showing eh? yeah showing another piece of propaganda you know and they do the same in academics for example uh, henrietti is an academic and he has seen this as well, how um, they are trying to infiltrate universities, any program possible in the universities, to uh, start uh, spilling their, their, you know, their, their propaganda. We, it was very funny because two days ago, a friend of ours who is in the, acad in the academy also, he's an academic, also told us that another academic, one uh, um, Guanche is his name, who until now has been very careful, never say, like, uh, he makes article, but uh, never criticize, you know, but they has to talk about July 11 because the whole country went to the street, so they cannot ignore it. This guy, to, 
few days ago, we knew that he was appointed by the Cuban government at UNESCO. So everything is, you know, so I think art is not an ex is, is also in that plan, you know. Uh, so in all this, I think what I'm left wondering is, we know for a fact that they don't care and they have their own thing there and they know that they're doing the right thing for themselves. But I think on like, when it comes to groups and things like what you're doing, then there's like, we have to take position, you know? So do you plan somehow to take position on this, apart from here, but do you plan on like somehow showing something in Venice or something like that? Have you ever thought about it? Just, just curiosity, you know? No, no, no. Well, we are trying, the, the thing that is interesting is I feel at this moment, who knows what happens tomorrow because politics are, we don't have all the elements of what they're doing, but at this moment, what we call independent and autonomous art is stronger than what they are trying to do. At this moment, we have, I don't know, more than 10, 15 uh, films that were produced independently that have won the best awards for independent cinema um, film um, uh, festivals. Uh, we have all of this here in Documento, which is the most important exhibition. Unfortunately, we are people. We are not institutions. We can't be institution, and this is designed that way, so we cannot have authority, quote, unquote, to talk to institutions on one-on-one. -on -one. Um, that's why they don't allow in Cuba anybody to have an institution legally. Um, no, we are here because we were invited and we used the opportunity, but we don't, if they invite us to Venice, yes, we'll do it again. But we don't, you know what I mean? The, the Minister of Culture can talk to the director of Venice Biennale. I can't, because I am just an artist, you know? No, and the other thing is that, um, as I said, as I said uh, before, we cannot uh, create any places in Cuba, say like a cultural center or so. Tanya cre uh, created uh, in starting Cuba, or Luis Manuel Otero Alcantara created um, el, 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 the, the San Isidro movement place. Uh, they are both closed, though, because um, the Cuban government, the cultural institution, the security state say no. So you can do, you cannot uh, do many things. So you cannot come back to, to Cuba. So the place now is for, mostly for artists, uh, has uh, Nelson, the, uh, the Ariano, a uh, uh, modern artist. So artists that the government think that also you have a good behavior, a well behavior, so you are a good artist, you can do anything you like, but you cannot go against the Cuban government. So and what is happening? So you, you cannot go there. And, and the other point is that we have so many uh, political prisoners in Cuba, artists, uh, that take part in this group of, of prisoners or thinkers or intellectual activists, or, you know. And it is a really um, totalitarian moment. So it is a totalitarian system with some uh, radical totalitarian moment, moments in Cuba or strongest totalitarian moments. So you can do so, some little things, you know, not, not too much. Yeah, hello. My name is Clemens Lorenz from Rundfunk Meissner Radio. So if you are now living here somewhere outside of Cuba and maybe some other artists as well, how do the Cuban government then explain if you get quite famous outside why you're not living in, in Cuba? And does it somehow re um, in fact the Cuba, Cuban island itself when you are working outside? Is there any feedback you can get from from Cuba of what you do here or in other European or American countries?
I, um, first of all, when you enter Cuba, if you go outside and enter Cuba, the first thing the, the security of a state tells you is you are not an artist. So, yeah. And, um, and at one point, I thought, okay, maybe they say this because... I don't know, they want to make you feel bad. No, what I understood at some point is you're not an artist because you're going to be treated like a traitor. So everything you do is an attack on the, on the government. And they don't say government, they say on the um, state, on the, you know, motherland, you know, so it's this big. So, yeah, I don't know. How they do it? Um, they how they do it? They have people talking bad about us all the time, created rumors that are fake and false about us. Um, I had the experience of someone I cannot name, but who approached me and say things somebody who work in an embassy is saying about me. Um, they what they do is, for example, when I had the solo show in MoMA, like a solo project in MoMA, they send the guy that you put before, um, Jorge Fernandez there, uh, to go to New York and meet with all the um, collectors, director of museums, and, and curators bad about me. And of course, he's the director of a national museum in, in a country. Of course, everybody's going to open the doors, you know? So I think they are very good at understanding the power of institutions, you know, and the, and the way they can be parallel, even if they are not. Um, so, yeah, it's a constant struggle. We had, for example, um, I was doing uh, at the Insta a workshop in 2017, and a professor of San Alejandro came with his students and he was expelled from the school because he brought people to the center. And they, and, they, and they called the fathers and the mothers, the parents of the kids, to uh, tell them about how monstrous I was and how dangerous it is that the kids are going to the instar. So it's, it's all behind the scenes. Unfortunately, they don't have the dignity of confronting you in, in, in person. You know, they always go behind and they do all these, you know, low things. I don't know how to call it. Um, <clears throat> uh, I had a, a workshop that I was attending earlier with um, this artist named Jumana, and they said this really beautiful thing of, when thinking about their own work, they try and use imagination and creativity to imagine the relationship to Palestine outside of a political one. And so for you as artists that are exiled, censored, and going through all these things, um, are you able to imagine your relationship to Cuba outside of a political context? Yeah, I think that um, well, yeah, I am, at the first, I am a professional, so I am teaching now in Mexico in the university. I am the, the head of the visual arts department at the UAM, one of the um, Autonoma, uh, Universidad Autonoma Metropolitana in Mexico, and I work in some other, so, and I, and I, I think that uh, that you can live when when you want wa, wa, want to live if you can, and I think that I think that in the future the Cuban con context uh, will will we will be only uh, one part of my work and uh, my life. So you can live in, in some other places and meet other people and work other places and 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 I think it's good because you you can understand um, what uh, are the the cultural processes in other places so and you can understand better what is happening in Cuba and this is what I show this uh, Cuban functionaries so 
it is different that, that here. So you are a curator or a functionary or of the uh, public in institution. Uh, you uh, not always or not have uh, the necessity to uh, answer to to communist party, for, for for example. So we are going to war because you're an artist and I am a curator or or whatever. But you know, I think I think this is a good point to understand what is happening inside Cuba. And um, but. I think that that not it, it is not necessary to be uh, married or 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 really close to the political context to understand what is happening in Venezuela or Nicaragua or some part of Africa or you know or what is happening also with the, the democratic uh, countries you know like has Germany or Spain or whatever you no know? so I think this is a point if you are a critic people. Uh, critic people or person or democratic people, I, I think it's really important to be clear in this point. Huh? Thank you so much, Henry. Thank you.